Well, hi, YouTubers. Hi. Okay, so I went out today um, and I went into my local library, not to get books out, um, just to kind of have a quick look in there, but I didn't get any out because I've got a stuff to actually take back and I actually need to review. However, they have a book sale on. Uxbridge Library has a book sale on. Oh God, my one weakness, my one weakness. So I've got a bag of books. So I thought I'd show you what I got today is my books. And if anyone's actually read these books, let me know any good, any bad. Um, which one should I just phone the um, charity shop bag and which one should I review? So, massive baggy full of books. Yeah, and I'll tell you how much I paid for this beautiful, beautiful book bounty. Okay. So, do, 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 do. oh, bag is from um, Cobalt Blue, which is the art shop. Um, bag this bag forever. Great bag. Okay, boom. Ta-da. Okay. Virginia Andrews, not only Virginia Andrews, um, The Unwelcome Child. Virginia Andrews, more than 106 million books sold worldwide. Yeah, not normally by her. Um, yeah, she's written many series. The Dollar Ganger Family Series, Dickerstale Family Series, which is when she sadly passed away. And then after that, um, a ghostwriter um, picked up the slack. Uh, Needham, I do believe it is, and did the Cutler family, the Landry family, the Logan family, the author miniseries, the Wire family miniseries, this goes on and on and on. Now, I read a couple of the um, Ghostwriter, and uh, oh man, these books have issues. No, no, the content in these books have issues. A lot of issues. Honestly, you read these books, and no matter what's going on in your own life, or your own family, it looks the same by comparison. I mean, read the blurb. Here we go. It's a long blurb. <clears throat> a mother had looked into the face of evil so many times she knew what it was. It was me. I was born without a soul. Ella, or Ellie Edwards, grew up believing that because of her mother's sinful ways, she was born without a soul. That's why she was abandoned to the care of Grandmother Myra and Grandfather Prescott, who tried to assure her that her evil would not infect them by raising her in a virtual prison. Because Ella's days are occupied with homeschooling, strict religious studies and vigorous housekeeping in the upstate New York home, there's practically nothing of the outside world. But when she makes a secret forbidden connection with visitors at a nearby lake, a handsome boy and his precocious twin sister, Ella's world will, be sh Ella's world will shatter as her past meets the present. Will learn the truth about her mother send her plumbing to hell? Maybe some discoveries are forbidden for a reason. Okay, now I'd hate to say it's only supernatural based or the whole heaven and hell and souls, but remember that this ghostwriter, and I'm going to find his name, I'm going to put in the links, did a series about vampires. Okay, so, and he also, well, he didn't do Flowers in the Attic, but Flowers in the Attic is a bit. Okay, they twisted. And I read that book when I was quite young, a lot of it went over my head till I reread it as an adult, and I was like, okay. Love the film though, Louise Fletcher as the grandmother, I just love her, okay? So, great Kai Wynn in Star Trek DS9, love her. Okay, so that's the first one, The Unwelcome Child by Virginia Andrews, okay? Second up we have, uh-huh, uh, Millie Johnson, I've read a few of her books. Um, this book was published in 2013, okay, called It's Raining Men, okay? It was a CBS drama book of the month. Okay. Here we go. Best friends from work, May, Lara and Claire, are desperate for some time away. They have each had a rough time of it lately and need some R&R. &R, so they set off to a luxurious spa for 10 glorious days. But when they arrive at the destination, it seems it's not the place they thought it was. In fact, they appear to have come to entirely the wrong village. Here in Wren Dullum, nothing is quite what it seems. Lovely cobble streets and picturesque cottages hide a secret that the villagers have been keeping hidden for years. Was everyone so unfriendly and suspicious? Why does the landlord of their holiday rental seem so rude? And why are there so few women in the village? Despite the strange atmosphere, the three friends are determined to make the best of it. But will this be the break they all need? Or will the odd little village, with all its secrets, bring them all to breaking point? Okay. That sounds weird. The bit of a Millie Johnson's work. That sounds so sinister, doesn't it? Yeah, there's the um, thing. 
Now, my mind, there's an episode of Absolutely Fabulous called um, France, where they go to, obviously, France. And due to a miscommunication, they wind up in this cottage and they think they're going to be in a spa. We're going to do translation error. And instead, they're in this cottage and they just wind up having fun by painting and playing ping pong. And yeah, so it's very been so. That's what this reminded me of, in the wrong place. I was meant to say sisters are going on. There are so few women. I'm like, what is this like the Stepford Wires? I didn't watch it. <laughs> oh, I've got to review this one. I've got to review this one now, okay? I'll, let, uh, I'll spoil it, it's 2013, okay? Okay, so next up in my book bag, uh, which one am I grabbing? Okay. Now this is a young adult novel, and I've never heard of it, okay? But it's by Kate O'Hearn. Um, I've got, uh, got a... Um, comment by Rick is it Royden author of Percy Jackson okay much to love okay so called Valkyrie think Valkyrie oh I love Valkyrie Valkyrie as in the Marvel Universe I love her Queen Valkyrie you know that's the thing I was like is that actually a name is that like a universal name you're all called Valkyrie or is that her actual name <laughs> I thought it was a title there you go Freya, I love that name, Freya dreads turning 14, the official end of her childhood, a time to take up the full duties of a Valkyrie. But Freya doesn't want to fight in the footsteps of the legends before her. As she, reverse, sorry, as, as she observes the human world, she wonders what it's like to make friends with girls and laugh with boys without fear of causing their death with one touch. And then on her first mission, she reaps a soul with unfinished business and sends her to the human world on a desperate quest. Will she find the true meaning of being human or being legendary? Okay, it's by Kate O'Hearn. And um, it's part of a series, but I don't think you need to read the others first. Okay. So she's written five books uh, prior to this about Pegasus. And this book came out also in 2013. So um, I'll be spoiling it, but I like that. I like the idea. And knew nothing about Pegasus, but I know the story of Pegasus, so I'd try to get those later. Okay, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. here we go. A hardback. Now I've actually got this already in my bookcase, and I'm read because the book I have is the Uncorrected Proof. Do you want to sell it to publishers? I got it in a charity shop years ago, and it's threw it on the side. And because um, I actually collect um, um, proof books, because sometimes it's things and um. And then you actually read the book that comes out and there's changes. And it's always good to kind of compare and contrast. So I would kill, put this down. Jane Austen's first draft of Pride and Prejudice was called First Impressions. However, she changed it. She basically rewrote it. I would kill to read First Impressions. Just to see what she changed. Now, it does exist. And it is in the possession of the Austen family, if you will. But it's never been published. I would kill to read the first draft of Pride and Prejudice. So, let me talk about this book, though. Wildfire Saga, Deep Blue, by Jennifer Donnelly. Okay, so, hardback. Okay, let me read the um, blurb. Um, one, on the biggest, sorry, on the morning of her betrothal, Serafina's biggest worry should be about her reunion with Prince Madi, her childhood crush. Instead, she is haunted by strange dreams foretelling the return of an ancient evil, and the city is stormed by assassins. Led only by her shadowy dreams and pursued by the invading army, Serafina and her best friend, Nila, embark on a quest to find the army's leader and prevent a war between the mer nations. They must search for four other mermaids, heroines, who are scattered across the six seas. Together, they will form an unbreakable bond of sisterhood and uncover a conspiracy that threatens their world's very existence. Now, what's interesting okay, about this book is this, okay? The publishers of this book and the um well as um this well there's three other books that follow deep blue rogue wave dark tide and fair winds okay this book came out in 2014 is the publisher is disney and they're picking a series from disney publishing worldwide yeah so what is meant to be a franchise um like the books come out, then the show comes out, or the films come out, that never happened. Because I'm I'm curious about this because Disney doesn't seem the kind of people that just to release a book 
about things that follow okay it's how descendants has an animated show and the books and everything else so there is no just one media when it comes to disney it crosses over as multiple medias okay so yeah wildfire saga deep blue and it's a saga and this is the first one so i will be doing a review of this book eventually hey look this is going in a to read pile it's a long big pile okay humor me okay so there's a few more books to follow okay so it is the second from last third from last carmen reed new york valentine her true love is in london but her new love is new york i would have that problem in my life here we go personal shopper anna valentine has a dream job in the heart of fabulous Manhattan. Daughter Lana is lost in the in the heat of first love, but has she fallen for a heartbreaker? In London, husband Ed faces a scandal at work and knows in his heart he needs Annie back. What's a girl to do when a true love is in London, but a new love is New York? Hmm. Okay. By Carmen Reed. Now, this is. The fifth in a series, okay, about Annie Valentine. I didn't know this. I know about Carmen Reed as an author, okay. Prior to this is a personal shopper, late night shopping, how not to shop, celebrity shopping. Now, I'm going to look out for the other books, but it'd be interesting to read a book as fifth in a series without reading the others. Okay, so, and uh, for, I could probably give it, it feels very sex in the city, this, doesn't it? Okay, it came out in 2011, so it's nine years old. And it's very kind of Sex in the City or just Shopaholic series. Um, which, incidentally, because in the Shopaholic books are set in London, but the Shopaholic film, okay, with Isla Fisher, was set in New um, America. Um, how I felt about the book series, Becky Bloom was kind of annoying, but you read them in because they're quite compulsive. And the film, hey, Isla Fisher did a good job, but I was like, nah. Okay, and there's two more that are relating to a, or technically three more, they're relating to a project I've got coming out soon. Um, it does mean when I actually get there. Now, I'm about to start a new project. Um, I've already done the reviews for two of the books. I did those when I was in Prague. Um, they're already uploaded, but I'm not ready to go yet. Those are finished six months, 60 books. I'm only a few books away from that. So, Mills and Boom. Here you go. Here you go. So, yeah, so basically, it's about Mills and Boom. I get to it when I actually do get there. Here we go. Right, this book is called A Royal World Apart. Quite um, interesting since uh, what's going on in my country at the moment regarding the royals. And um, it's called A Royal World Apart by Maisie Yates. It's a Northern Boom Modern. And let me read the blurb. With a life my tap before her, Princess Evangeline Dracos, knows, I'm sorry, known for her dramatic flair, hopes the minor scandal she plans to create will deter potential suitors. Hide for ease, security, unemotional bodyguard, Mikhail Nabatov never, never makes a mistake. But the impulsive princess pushes his resolve to the limits. It's not long, however, before the beautiful as imprisoned Eve entices him to leave his bond of duty and honour behind. Whilst their chemistry reaches fever pitch, Mikhail knows he must deny his desire, for Eve is promised to another man. Oh, man. Yep. Yep. So... Where's, where's this author um, from? Here you go. Uh, across, okay, she grew up in the USA. Yep, I've noticed that. When American authors write about royalty in any shape or form, they always kind of get a bit. So basically, the princess lost over her bodyguard, but she's promised to another man. Okay, so, and this one is a two-in-one book, so technically it's two books, but it's together. Okay, um, it's the Under the Mills and Boone Cherish. Okay. Um, let me read the um, blurb. One of the books is called A Wife for One Year by Brenda Harlan. Let me read that first. A Wife for One Year. To claim his trust fund and launch his career, bachelor Daniel Garrett needs to be married. And no one can tick all the wifely boxes like his best friend Kenneth Scott. But an unplanned night with his virgin bride leads to a surprise that may forever alter their friendship forever. Okay, I'm going with the fact, okay, that one night of this virgin bride, she gets pregnant. One night, yep. Yeah. One night. One time. I don't have to look that up, okay? And that's by Brenda Harlan. Right, and this one here, 
um, is From Maverick to Daddy by Tessa Southwick. Sorry, Teresa Southwick. Teresa Southwick wrote From Maverick to Daddy. Here we go. Grouchy cowboy Caleb Dalton usually avoided all things family related. He'd rather run for the hills and get involved with a woman who has an eight year old child. But spunky Mallory Franklin and her adopted daughter have his bachelor wanting to change all that. Okay. I'll get to you and I'll get to you. And from the Cherish Collection of Mills and Boone. So, now for this beautiful bounty of. Count this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I paid the grand total of £1.40 for this bun for this beautiful book bounty. Yes. So this is what I have and what I will eventually read and review. I've got stuff to actually review down there, stuff to review if I go back to the library. I have a project I'm launching soon. But this is what I got and I'm like, you know, I thought about that when I get there. So basically support your local libraries and their sales because you get lovely, lovely gorgeous bounties for under one pound fifty. So, and my Uffie's Library's sale runs from the 1st, um, March to the 8th of March. Sometimes it goes over and they put a small selection just by, um, just in front of like the children's section when you first go in. It's an Uffie's Library. Um, all the other Hindon libraries have them in the various branches sometimes. Um, I know that Hayes does and Uxbridge does, um, but they're normally just cropping up anywhere. There used to be a massive sale every single year at the barn in Rice and all the ex library books used to be just taken there and it was like a mass mass sale and it was great this was many many years ago and that was awesome but i and it was people queuing for that so i am um tired of my bounty i'm thanks for watching this i'm glad you got this far and uh, i am signing off so i'm saying a little bit rough but i feel a bit of a cold at the moment um and i love you to you all and bye now and if you read any of these books already let me know what you thought in the comments I'd love to read those. Take care, everyone. Bye now.